wait, we're about to start. Do you have any questions? Yes. What are we going to talk about today? I hope it's going to be good. We're going to talk about the art of letting go. What is the big deal about letting go anyways? Just listen. We're going to find out. Hello. This podcast is sponsored by aboutmeditation.com and our free How to Meditate mini course. Learn meditation in five easy lessons at aboutmeditation.com. Welcome to the One Mind Podcast from aboutmeditation.com. My name's Morgan Dix, and I'm your host. On One Mind, we explore different angles on meditation, mindfulness, and health. We interview experts and everyday practitioners to bring you the stories, the science, and the exploration that will help you understand why this ancient practice is more relevant and important today than ever before. Hi everyone, welcome to the show. This is going to be a shorter episode today. This is one of these in-between episodes where we explore a particular facet of meditation a little more in depth. And it's just going to be me. Today we're going to talk about the topic of letting go as it relates to meditation and more broadly in life. Before we get into the meat of today's topic, I wanted to ask if you could please do me a favor and head on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and a review. What do you think of the show? Seriously, let me know how I'm doing. I'd love to hear from you. Your feedback is super helpful and I read it all. Now, back to the topic of letting go. I've been wanting to do a show about this topic for a while, and here's why. Letting go is really the heart of meditation practice. It's the essence of what you do when you sit down to meditate. No matter what kind of meditation practice you're engaged with, I'd say probably 95% of it is going to be about this one simple choice or act of letting go over and over again. And I've been wanting to do this for a while because every time I sit down and meditate, I think about you and I think, oh my God, how can I convey the awesomeness of this practice, the beauty, the simplicity of being, and the sheer positivity of letting go and being. So what is letting go? And what exactly are we letting go of when we meditate? And How deep does it go? Is there any end to how much we can let go? And also, how healthy is it to let go? What are the benefits and are there any dangers? So we're going to talk about all that today. And if you feel like sometimes your mind is like a washer and dryer and you're just getting buffeted by the jet turbine spinning your head like ah, 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 and that's what it's like for a lot of us before we learn how to let go and unplug from our thoughts then you're gonna like this episode it's important for each of us to learn how to let go so we can step outside of that constant thought stream the one where we're getting buffeted all the time. Because the truth is, a lot of us were often tortured and distracted and confused by everything that's going on upstairs in our own minds. But we don't need to be. Learning how to let go in meditation, it can help with that. And this show is broken down into five chapters. Let's quickly go through them. Chapter one. What governs the movement of our minds? Chapter 2. Take out the trash. Chapter 3. How do you let go? Chapter 4. Your mind is not the enemy. And finally, Chapter 5. There are different levels of letting go. So, let's jump in. Chapter 1. What governs the movement of our mind? For me, I guess in a certain way, I kind of stumbled onto the power of letting go. But once I did, I was hooked. 
Here's the short version. I was young. I was in love. And eventually, me and my lover, we went our separate ways. I was devastated, and I had a really hard time letting go. And in fact, I held on pretty tight for years. But then, at a certain point, I let go. And when I did, it was like a dam burst inside of me, as if all this life energy was stoppered and building up. And my mind and my heart basically just exploded. And I fell back into love with life. And I discovered that on some fundamental level, life is essentially good beyond measure. In the pulsing, vibrating heart of the universe, there's this unbridled positivity at the very core. And that's what struck me like a lightning bolt when I let go. At a certain point, I realized this same letting go I experienced with that breakthrough, it's what happens in meditation. Maybe it's not so dramatic, but it's the same principle. Meditation is the gradual process of letting go on deeper and deeper levels and stopping to identify with all the stories we tell ourselves and the unconscious and conscious narratives that run repeatedly through our minds. So I'll never forget reading my first book on Buddhism. It was called The Gates of Buddhist Practice by a teacher named Chag De Tolku. He was a Tibetan Buddhist Rinpoche, and he described the source of suffering as the Buddha defined it in a way that I had never heard before. He said that fundamentally, all of us are motivated by fear and desire, and that these two things, fear and desire, they're just two sides of the same coin. Attraction and aversion, attraction and repulsion, fear and desire. And the heart of this dynamic, fear and desire, they play out not just in the world around us, although they do that too, but all of it starts in our minds and how we relate to our thoughts and our feelings. This is what Buddha identified as the source of our suffering. And really for most of us, if not all of us really, that's the upstream source that ends up defining so many of our choices in life and ultimately our destiny. It's that core dynamic between the thoughts we fear and the thoughts that we desire, the things we move towards and the things we move away from. So we, of course, in life, we want things and we avoid things, but that whole dynamic it starts in our minds and becomes one of the deepest grooves that exists within us. But I saw that that core dynamic, it really shaped the way I saw the world. And I saw this is what Buddha is talking about. It's, it's how we see ourselves, how we see others, how we see our experiences and the world around us. It all happens through this filter that becomes more and more conditioned over time with all the traumas and experiences that we have in our life. And it's not to say it's good or it's bad or anything like this. It was just this very powerful insight that Buddha had and which is available to each one of us if we pay attention. So this brings us back to the topic for today, letting go. Because letting go, it's really the best, if not the only way to step out of that habitual relationship to thought and feeling, to get out of that polarizing dynamic of fear and desire. Chapter 2, Take Out the Trash. So what is letting go? And why does it help so much to free us of this dynamic? And, and what happens when you let go in meditation? So I always find it helpful to use imagery and metaphor. So imagine you're standing on the edge of a cliff and you're peering over the edge. There's a vast drop in front of you. And at the same time, 
you're hanging on to this big sack of stuff and you're holding it out over the edge of that cliff and it's pulling on you. All your energy is going into holding up this sack. So you have to strain all your muscles just to hold it up. Everything is burning. Your back, your arms, your mind is starting to fray. And then you kind of realize at a certain point, pretty much everything in that sack is garbage. It smells horrible. And it occurs to you, why am I holding on to this so tightly? Why are my knuckles white? And why is all my energy going into this? So you just open your hands and the bag slips right out of your fingers. Suddenly, the view, it takes your breath away and you feel light. You feel relief. But you couldn't see the view before because all of your energy and all of your attention, it was all invested in that sack of garbage that you were holding up. But now you feel light, you feel unburdened, and you actually feel like you could fly. And that's a lot what letting go feels like. And the thing is, like most of us carry around a sack of garbage like that. I mean, I do. I know I do it every single day. Or that sack, it's filled with it's filled with grudges, with stress, with anger, with sadness, with resentment. And it's always accumulating more weight. And that weight, it's the constant buildup of our life experience that's unresolved and unexamined. And we tend to hold on to it with a life and death urgency and intensity. So in meditation, the point is that you get to experience the act of letting all of that go over and over again. And I'm telling you, after a lifetime of holding on tight, letting go of all that makes you feel like you can fly. Sure, You're just sitting quietly on your meditation cushion. But inwardly, your mind takes flight. When you let go, your mind and your heart are suddenly unburdened. They lift off. It's like coming home to yourself. I I don't know how this works, but basically, at the same time, you feel deeply rooted on one hand and expansive and limitless in the other. Chapter 3. How do you let go? So how does it work? I like to think of letting go a little bit like a river. On the surface, there are the rapids. And the water is rough. It's really choppy and sometimes it's really just out of control. That's the surface level of most of our minds. It's moving fast and it's just careening over those rocks and, and there's a, it's a tumultuous affair. That's what we usually experience just in ordinary consciousness. Then as you start to practice this letting go that I'm talking about, you begin to slowly drop down beneath the surface of the rapids. You drop down to where the current slows. And as you keep letting go, you just drop down to slower and slower currents in the river. And the deeper you go, the slower moving the water. That's what the experience of letting go is like in meditation. At the bottom of that river, it's still very quiet. There's no commotion. It's an easy way to imagine the process of letting go, moving through the layers of your own mind. And so, for example, this morning I was meditating. Every time I found myself following a train of thought or getting caught up in some inner discussion, or excited about some new project, I just let go. I relax and let go. Meditation is the act of doing that over and over again. It is incredibly simple. And in the process, slowly but surely, I'm stepping outside the momentum of that fear and desire 
that the Buddha identified. You see, letting go allows you to simply be outside that constant dynamic that lives in the thought stream. And it lives in our relationship to our inner experience, our mind, our thoughts, and our feelings. Or say that you're counting your breath in meditation. Every time your mind wanders and you get distracted, your job is to come back to counting your breath. Very simple, not necessarily easy. But in the act of coming back to counting your breath, you're doing the same thing, letting go of that habitual relationship to your mind. It's subtle, but that's exactly what's happening. And that's why these practices of letting go and meditation, that's why they're so relaxing. They help you step out of the, the source, of, for most of us, of so much of our stress and so much of our anxiety. You're stepping out of the domain of your relentless problem-solving mind. Chapter 4. Your mind is not the enemy. So I don't want you to misunderstand me. And I'm not saying here that our minds and our thoughts are the bad guys. Our minds are a miracle of evolution. There's no question about it. And we all can derive enormous pleasure and inspiration and delight from the activity in our mind when we see great art, when we read great literature. The mind on fire is a beautiful, outrageous, and lovely thing to experience. I, I live for that. That's not what we're talking about here. Rather, it's just important to understand how the mind works and how you can unplug from it when, if, and as you choose. And I also want to be clear, I'm not saying that letting go in meditation is some panacea for all your problems. Not at all. Letting go in the way that I'm talking about, it can give rise to inspiration, to insight, to creative vision, and to all sorts of things. It can help you see through deep and unhealthy patterns of attachment. But at the same time, a lot of people escape into meditation as well. And you don't want to do that. Just like people escape into drugs, alcohol, or sex, you can get lost here too. And it's important to understand that. You don't want to just escape into bliss and just live there. That's not really the point. My point is that letting go is a very human thing. And it's a necessary part of life. For me, I love to sit down and let go because it allows me to enter into direct communion with life and the present moment as I let go of that crust that gathers every day around my being and I just release my mind, there is an immediate engagement with just life that's unmediated by that filter of thought. That's incredibly healthy and it's incredibly rejuvenating. It's like plugging into the source of your being. Because we tend to hold on so tight, our view, it just tends to get eclipsed and it gets narrow. And as a result, our life can get narrow. So I love letting go in meditation because everything opens up. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, I can breathe. There's light. Life is good. And I am reminded that I don't need anything more to be happy. There's incredible delight and fulfillment in just being. You don't need to add anything to it. And so I think we all need this kind of touchstone in our lives. Meditation isn't the only way to let go, and it isn't the only way to touch into this source that I'm talking about. But it's one powerful way. At the heart of it is letting go. 
Chapter 5 There are different levels of letting go. So another thing about letting go is that there are different levels to it. In the beginning, letting go is superficial. You're just letting go of this thought and that thought or this feeling and that feeling. And that's important and that's a necessary part of the process. That's when you're up there on the surface of that river and you're just beginning to sink down beneath it. But after, say, an hour or so or a few hours of letting go, you start to sink and expand. Letting go helps you break up all that crust that gathers during your day. And it helps you loosen your grip on everything. Before you know it, you find that you fall into yourself. Your senses expand and so does your awareness. You're outside that habitual, contracted state of mind. This is a kind of deeper letting go. It's refreshing and rejuvenating. It's like pressing the reset button. And then you can go deeper still, like on silent retreats. There, the letting go is much deeper still. On a long retreat, your thoughts, they tend to resolve into a single stream of thought. They become less and less distinct. Thought just becomes one stream, becomes one thing that you're letting go of again and again. Compared to in the beginning where you you have very particular thoughts and very particular feelings and they capture your attention and snag it. Now you're much deeper. You're, You're in a different place. And it's at this point that you really get to see your deeper attachments. So you get to see the thoughts or the emotions or the patterns in your mind that stand out because they're harder to let go of. Those are the thought patterns or things that we really deeply fear or we really deeply desire. What we encounter at that level is the momentum of energy and attention that we've been investing in them. Maybe for years or maybe for our lifetime. At that deeper level, that's where you start to encounter these deeper parts of yourself, these deeper patterns. And seeing them is very liberating. And then here's the thing. If you keep letting go, you move past all these objects in your awareness. You go into deeper levels of simplicity and being. Until at a certain point, you're just full. And all you want to do is enjoy the fullness and the simplicity of being through letting go. All you want to do is let go. Here's a quote from the great Tibetan master Sogyal Rinpoche when he describes letting go at the deepest level. Imagine you were living in a house at the top of a mountain, which itself was at the top of the whole world. Suddenly the entire structure of the house, which limited your view, just falls away and you can see all around you, both outside and inside. But there is not any thing to see. What happens has no ordinary reference whatsoever. It is total complete, unprecedented, perfect seeing. So I don't know how many of us are going to have an experience that's as deep as what Sogyo Rinpoche described. And it's not necessarily, at least in my opinion, maybe the most important thing. Because, like I said, and I've been saying, there's levels to letting go. And I think... All of those levels are good and important. Let's come back to my simple point. Letting go is a touchstone experience that I believe everyone should have. At that deepest level that I was talking about on silent retreat, you start to experience your own inherent wholeness and your connection to everything. It doesn't deny our human selves with all our traumas and our insecurities and our concerns. 
those are all real. Those are all valid. We're not, we're not saying anything about that. But it's just this part of us, when we let go, we discover a part of us that's whole already. And connecting to that part of ourselves, it's completely life-affirming. And it's healing at the deepest level. So that's a super quick, high-level overview of letting go. There's a lot we haven't talked about. And it's important to remember, I'm talking about this in very broad strokes. There are many people, teachers, who can elaborate on this process with much greater refinement than I ever could. We haven't even talked about the immense creative potential that comes through letting go. Often when I sit down and meditate and let go, there's a rich stream of creative connection and ideas that just pours forth from my mind. And because I'm meditating, I let them go. But at times, some of them stick. And I pick them up afterwards. And I'm grateful for access to that creative source. And we just barely touched on the fact that so much of our stress and anxiety, it comes from our fundamental relationship to our minds and how much learning to let go can really help you reverse the effects of stress by disrupting these deep and habitual patterns in how we relate to our thoughts. And that is so healthy for your body, your mind, your emotions, and ultimately your spirit. So I want to encourage you to take a little time today and let go. Just sit still and let everything fall away. All your problems, all your concerns, all your worries, all your plans. Just do it for a short time. Let it all go and just be. Just imagine you're on that cliff and you just released your grip and you let it all fall away. And that burden is soaring to the bottom while you slowly but surely lift off. Because I know how hard you're working and pushing to make it all happen. All of us are. So do this for yourself. And know that it's going to make you happier, more effective, and more fulfilled in everything you do. So I hope you enjoyed this short episode on Letting Go. This episode is sponsored by our free How to Meditate mini course. Learn how to let go in five easy lessons and just visit www.aboutmeditation.com. And if you like the show today, let me know. I enjoy the interviews and I enjoy creating these short episodes for you too. Let me know what you like by heading over to iTunes and leaving us a rating and a review. I'd read and appreciate all your comments and all your feedback. And finally, let's end with a quote. This one is from the great Indian mystic, Sri Nisargadatta. He says, To deal with things, knowledge of things is needed. To deal with people... You need insight, sympathy. To deal with yourself, you need nothing. Be what you are, conscious being. And don't stray away from yourself.